Father, we thank you for Stuart and thank you, God, for his heart. Lord, that he's a man that walks with you. And Lord, we can just see your heart manifested in his life. And we receive tonight's ministry. And we, we just want to declare we bless you in the name of Jesus. And we receive from you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you and thank you so much. Thank you. Good evening. Hoe gaan het? Baie goed, dankie. Always good to be back. It's, it's good when you get invited back. You must know that you did something right, hopefully. <laughs> um, just a big thank you to Emmanuel Church and all the leaders. It's just um, it's an incredible privilege to be back here again. We had a wonderful catch-up in the motor car on the way up. And... Um, it just feels like family to me, to be honest. Just, it's like I, I feel like I was here yesterday. Um, but just to be back with everyone here and catching up with all the guys on the way back, it's been a great pleasure. And um, I have to be honest when I say this with all sincerity, I boast to all the people in Durban about the commitment of this church. That, that when, even when they have Wednesday and Thursday meetings like this, load shedding, the people come. I mean, I, I promise you, since I was back in Durban, I tell the people, these guys, they get together. Middle of the week, they're there. Friday night, they're there. Now, I know it's a dorpy, so maybe there's not much else to do. <laughs> but I love the commitment, and I love to see that kind of passion. Amen? It's, it's inspiring to see people that do that. Amen? So... I've been asked to share maybe just a few certain things and um, predominantly around the Holy Spirit and relationship with the Holy Spirit and walking with the Holy Spirit. So the previous time I was here, I focused a lot more on healing and teaching around healing and who God is as a healer. It doesn't mean that people will not get healed. People will still get healed. People will still get set free, but we're called to grow in the knowledge of God. Okay, so we're meant to keep growing in the knowledge of God and God's Grace and His kingdom is multifaceted. There are many different facets to the kingdom of God. So 
it's important that we keep growing in the knowledge of God and who He is. And so um, I felt very strongly as Andrews asked me to speak on this. Um, the easiest way for me to pray is I just pray in tongues. I spend hours and hours praying in tongues because then I can't be twisted or warped in the way that I'm praying for people. So even if I don't know them, I just pray because I know that I'm praying God's perfect will for them. So I do that all the time. When I'm driving with the children, I'm praying in tongues unless they're talking to me. If I'm doing laundry or whatever, I'm praying in tongues. It makes it much better. I promise you, life is much easier praying in tongues. Just say amen. It helps you. So we're going to be spending a lot of time around that. But as I was praying last week, nothing specifically, I got, I got a bit of a shock. We had, we had had a meeting at church. We had been running the Alpha. I came home, and um, I was just lying on the bed praying. And I just felt the Lord say to me, and it's where I'll be sharing from uh, predominantly over most of these few days. He gave me uh, Joel 2.28, and he just said to me, what does that scripture say? And I said, that scripture says that you will pour out your spirit on all flesh. So, you know, we're very clever. I said, I know that scripture very well, Father, very well. And he said, I just want you to say it again. But as I said it again, something happened to me. And I just felt the presence of God come and touch me. And I started to weep and weep and weep until I thought I couldn't cry anymore. And then the Lord said to me, I want you to say that again. And as I said it again, the same thing happened. And I just started weeping and weeping. And I think I got quite loud because my wife came in. She said, what's going on? I said, just leave me alone. <laughs> she closed the door. It went on for three hours. And as I kept speaking that scripture out, the Holy Spirit was ministering this incredible love. And I knew that God wants to do something very specific of these next few days with ministering to people and pouring out His Spirit on all flesh. Amen? So I just want to encourage you to be open, to be receptive to what the Holy Spirit wants you to do. Um, I'm, I'm going to break a few boxes in terms of how God can speak to us, how He can minister to us. Um, I love sharing testimonies because it, it's the testimony of Jesus. And, and I want to challenge you in terms of the way that you think about God and the way that you see God. I was born an Anglican from the womb. I came out Anglican. It's a joke. <laughs> I did all the things. I knew that I was born again at the age of 13. I started a relationship with God at high school. I knew something was different. But for most of my life, from the age of 13 to the age of 27, I was just a Christian going to heaven one day. And I was doing my best to be a good Christian. Don't go to nightclubs, don't drink, don't have bad thoughts, and, and some things to avoid. That was my Christian life. And I missed the art on 99% of Christianity. And I ended up severely depressed, severely condemned, and a very broken person. And at the age of 27, uh, can I just be very open? I don't know if you all know my story, but I was in severe, severe depression. Severely suicidal. That's where I was. And I'm going to be very honest, with my head in a toilet, vomiting. Every day for two years. Because of my parents getting divorced, life, stress. And you know, you're not feeling like the best Christian in the whole world when your Christian life has ended up with, you, with your head in the toilet, feeling like you hate yourself to the point of wanting to kill yourself. And that's where I was. And I had an encounter with the Holy Spirit that day that changed my life forever. Because for the first time, Jesus became very real to me, and I did not feel like I was worth it. Because I thought, in my eyes, this is the worst day of my life. And that's why I often say to people, the toilet was my throne room of grace. You see, because up until that point, I thought I deserved it because I never drank, I never smoked, I never did drugs. I was a very good Christian. But I always walked in condemnation and guilt and shame for all those years, 14 years. I never knew that God loved me. 
I didn't know that God accepted me. I never had confidence and boldness in my life as a Christian. And in that moment, everything changed because I heard the Holy Spirit say to me, Stuart, I love you. I actually thought it's the devil speaking to me. How can anybody say that when you have got your head in the toilet and you're feeling like the worst Christian in the whole world? And God said it to me again, Stuart, I love you. And if there's anything that I want you to know is that I will always, always love you and it will never change. From that day, I've never stopped preaching Jesus. Never stopped. I can't stop. And I went from severe depression and suicidal, panic attacks, anxiety attacks. That was my life for many, many years. The, the joke is, is that when I come into churches and environments around a lot of Christians, I often pray, Lord, please don't make me too joyful or too happy. I don't want to offend anybody. And I'm being dead serious. <laughs> I'm being dead serious. Because the joy that he put inside of me that set me free from all that stuff is still with me to this day. The Word of God says, a joy unspeakable and full of glory. So it's one thing to quote and to speak about it. It's another thing to experience it. And you see, God does not want intellectual assent to the Word. He wants revelation that's going to come to us where we don't just speak about it and think about it, but that it actually becomes real in our lives. Amen? Amen. So when it says there's a peace beyond understanding, I know this is very simple. There really is a peace beyond all understanding. And if it's not beyond understanding, then it's not the peace of God. <laughs> Amen? And it has to be real. There's some things that I could tell you about that happened this last week that you wouldn't believe me that I'm having so much peace and joy today. We had a hectic week last week. Hectic! One of the most hectic weeks we've ever had. And the peace and the joy was just there. So I want to challenge you um, in terms of this. I often say to people when you teach in preaching, and I'm not trying to, uh, we're, not, we're not denying that life goes on, amen? We're not saying that things don't happen. We're not living in denial, but we are living in another kingdom. So I often say to people, and, and please do not be offended by this, when you see me very joyful, you must know that I've had a week from hell. Because if the joy of the Lord is not my strength, then I would not be here today. Amen? You see, there is a reality in the kingdom of God that God is inviting us into where our peace is not dependent on our friends, our family, our circumstances, our situations, our finances, our jobs, all those things. It's really a peace that comes from heaven. Jesus said, my peace I leave with you. The peace that not is of not this world, but the peace that comes from above. Amen. And you see, that peace that comes from above is supernatural peace. Amen? Amen. We went to go visit um, somebody at the house the other day. We are not um, going in trying to be super spiritual. We're just being ourselves. And this guy had been quite sick, but we didn't know and it took about five or ten minutes, but as we were sitting talking, he, he physically started getting better. And he says, I can't explain it, but from the time that you came here, I'm feeling better. So I said, but that's not, that shouldn't surprise us. <laughs> Shalom. Nothing missing, nothing broken. Everything working in perfect harmony. So when we're walking in that peace, when we're carrying that peace, Number one, it's for us. God wants us to walk in that shalom peace, wholeness, fullness in every area of our lives. 
then what He wants for that is that peace to come out of us, that peace to influence the areas around us, where there's chaos and turmoil and all that around us, the peace that's overshadowing us is greater. Amen? Amen? That's why in Scripture says, greater is He that is in us or me than He that is in the world. That means that anything that's going on around us, anything that we are facing, it's still the truth that greater is He who is in me than He that is in the world. Amen? Amen? So that encounter with the Holy Spirit, I didn't actually know it was the Holy Spirit because I didn't know who the Holy Spirit was. So I'm just being really real. I didn't know who the Holy Spirit was. Because growing up Anglican, it was the Father, the, the Son, and the Bible. We didn't know about the Holy Spirit. And, and it actually offended me when I thought back later, a few years, I thought, I can't believe that God actually healed me of depression. I couldn't believe it. When I thought back, I thought, I was severely depressed one, and the next day I woke up 100%. And it actually offended me that I could be healed like that by the Holy Spirit. And then I realized actually it was the Holy Spirit that was doing that to me the whole time. But you see, I, I didn't have the knowledge or the understanding of who the Holy Spirit was. So I'm just taking a little bit of a journey because this, is my, this was my introduction into normal Christianity. My parents were in the midst of a very long ongoing divorce that had been going on for six years. In court. Lots of money. We've got a very big family. We're very close. But when someone gets divorced, it affects the whole family. And I'd been praying and praying, God, we need help. I need help. I need help. We had family meeting after family meeting after family meeting, lawyer meeting after lawyer meeting after lawyer meeting. There was no reconciliation. The lawyers had it in court, and it was just going and going and going. And again, at the time, I didn't know it was the Holy Spirit, but I just felt in my heart, I want you to fast for a week, and I want you to phone your parents, and you will never speak to them ever again. I'm like, wow, who's this talking to me again? But all I knew is that whoever was speaking to me is the one that helped me from the toilet. So I'm going to start listening. <laughs> and I loved my parents, even while they were having a divorce. I loved them, but it was very difficult. But when I felt that I must not speak to them again, I had this conviction to not speak to them again. I phoned them. I said, I cannot speak to you ever again or ever see you ever again. And just to be sure, I went to one of the elders in our church and I said, I don't know what is going on, but I feel this. And he was a very godly man. He said, if, if you believe that that is what's in your heart, then you must go for it. It was the hardest decision of my life. I phoned my parents who I love very dearly and I told them I'll never see you ever again or ever speak to you ever again. By the end of the week, the court case ended. It had been going for six years. It ended by the end of the week. The lawyers phoned me and they asked me, what were you doing or what did you say to your parents? But the court case is over. That was my introduction into hearing from God. Now, I've spoken to my parents from that day. But the Lord said, I need you to make this decision because only I know what is going on in this situation. Your granny can't help. Your grandpa can't help. All your cousins can't help. Nobody can help. They're not listening. Only I know what's going on in their hearts and only I have the answer for this situation. And then I started to think, whoever this is speaking to me like this, I need to start listening. Amen? And that's what I really believe God is wanting to do with all of us. He wants us to bring into a place of simplicity, of hearing the voice of God, recognizing the voice of God, because the Word of God says, my sheep know my voice. They will listen to no other. And He wants us, you see, we are born again. We are, from the DNA inside of us, made to hear God. We are made to hear the Father's voice. Amen? Amen. But he says, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. In Acts 2, I just want to read a little bit of scripture. It says, when the feast of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. 
Without warning, there was a sound like a strong wind, a gale force. No one could tell where it was coming from. It filled the whole building. Then like a wild fire, the Holy Spirit spread through their ranks and they started speaking in a number of different languages as the Spirit prompted them. There were many Jews staying in Jerusalem just then, devout pilgrims from all over the world. When they heard the sound, they came out on the run. Then when they heard one after another their own mother tongues being spoken, they were thunderstruck. They couldn't for the life of them figure out what was going on and kept saying, aren't all these Galileans, how come we are hearing them talk in our various mother tongues? They are speaking on our languages, describing God's mighty works. Their heads were spinning. They couldn't make head nor tail of any of it. They talked backwards and forth, confused. What is going on here? Others joked. They are drunk on cheap wine. This is when Peter stood up. Backed up by the leaven, spoke out with bold urgency. Fellow Jews, all of you who are visiting Jerusalem, listen carefully and get the story straight. These people are not drunk, as some of you suspect. They haven't had the time to get drunk. It's only nine o'clock in the morning. This is what the prophet Joel announced would happen. In the last days, says the Lord God, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, every kind of person. Your sons will prophesy and your daughters, your young men will see visions, or your old men will dream dreams. When the time comes, I'll pour out my spirit on those who serve me, men and women both, and they will prophesy. I will set wonders in the sky above and signs on the earth below. This is the scripture that was confirmed in Acts as God poured out his spirit on all flesh. Amen? We can be born again and you can be saved and go to heaven, but you might not have an intimate relationship with the Holy Spirit. And God wants you to have an intimate relationship with the Holy Spirit because anything else is just religion. It's just religion. We just, there's nothing wrong with doing the book because I speak about that. There's being led and there's doing the word. Both are being led. But if you're just doing the word without relationship with God, it becomes religion. Okay, so we need to understand, I'll do some of that in the later sessions, doing the word and being led. It's, it's, there's a very close relationship, but without knowing Jesus and our relationship, it's just dead religion. Jesus said to the Pharisees, you know the word, you search the word, but you do not find life. Amen? He says, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden and heavy burdened, and I will give you rest for your souls. Because my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Come to me and I will teach you the unforced rhythms of grace. Amen? So you'll pour out a spirit in all flesh. We see that in Joel 2.28 and then Acts 2.17. So I started on this journey and I, what I'm going to do from Scripture tomorrow, more in teaching, is I believe that the, the Bible will always give us clear patterns to follow from the Word. I spoke about that last time with healing, clear patterns that we can follow through the life of Jesus, the disciples, and the early church. Clear, distinct patterns that are set for us as believers so we have something to follow after called the truth. We will see clear patterns. And so I'm going to spend more time tomorrow showing you from the Word what these patterns look like for us in the body of Christ. It's not wishy-washy. It's very clear-cut how we as believers can get born again, filled with the Spirit, and be led by the Spirit. There are clear patterns for us to follow. Amen? And so we can establish those patterns so we have clear, clear um, ways of seeing so we can actually experience and grab hold of these truths so we can make them our own. Amen? You see, it's the truth that you know that sets you free. How do you know that you know the truth? You will be free. <laughs> if you know the truth, you will be free. How do we know if you know the truth? You will be free. Free, free, free. Morse, very free. Very, very free. I, I like to use the word Morse because I think it adds 
Um, I won't use the word exaggeration. It adds strength. It's like it says when Jesus was dead, I always say he was more stood, very dead. <laughs> fire, fire, do it. But now he is more very alive. You see, I don't know if that's correct, but that's how I think. <laughs> that's how my soty brain works. And if he was very, very dead, and I was very, very dead with him, now he's very, very alive, now he's inviting me into very, very alive. Because the Bible says he tasted death so that we can experience life. And he fully tasted death so we can fully experience life. Come on, come on, come on. This is good news. There was purpose in him dying to be raised up and to be raised up with you. You see, it's good news that he was raised from the dead because the Bible says that he now being justified by faith, the fact that he was raised from the dead means you are just in his sight. If there was any more sin to be dealt with, he would not have been raised from the dead. And you wouldn't be standing justified today by the blood of Jesus. But because he's raised, you are right with him. Because he's raised from the dead, you are seated in heavenly places with him. My goodness, I want to know what it looks like to live from heaven. Come on, I want to provoke something inside of you. We can't settle for Christianity where we're just normal people seven days a week. Come on now. We are supernatural beings having a physical experience, but we are supernatural beings. At the core of our being is the supernatural spirit of God, the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. You can see I haven't preached for a while. <laughs> I was just saying to them, I've been on a vacation for quite a while. I'm just sharing on hearing from the Holy Spirit. I was saying to Andres now, I spent five years, almost five, six nights a week, preaching and going to hospitals every single night. Three, four hours of sleep a night for five years. I never got tired. I had energy every day. I did everything that I needed to do. And I still had more to go home to be with the family, the kids, everything. People, I used to, I use this word carefully, I used to frustrate people that was working hard in their own effort. Wow. I'm going to say some things that just receive it. Because grace will make hard work look easy. Wow. Wow. It's not that it's not hard work. It's hard work, but it's grace that's empowering you to do the work. You see, I don't want to do anything outside of the grace of God. So when God says stop preaching, I stop preaching. The Lord spoke to me last year when I finished here. I must have done a very good job because when I left Louis Trichard, he said, you're not preaching again. You're going to be on the radio and that's it. I haven't missed it. I don't think about it. I'm just doing the other things that the Lord has called me to do. Now, can you imagine if my identity was wrapped up in whether I'm teaching or preaching. I'd be a very, very sad person. But you see, thank God, our identity is in Christ. Our value is in Christ. Our identity is in Christ. I'm not what I do. I am who I am because of who God has made me to be. What we function in, what we flow in, is not our identity. It's not our value. It's the grace that God puts in our lives. So I'm enjoying this. I'm loving preaching again like this, but it's not what I get to do. I'm not working for God. I'm flowing with the Holy Spirit. I'm working. I'm actually with my father, my Abba. We are in partnership together. Amen? Amen. Because he's called us into his kingdom. He's bestowed upon us a kingdom. In fact, the word of God says it gives him great pleasure to bestow upon us a kingdom. Amen? Amen? I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. So I went on this journey of, of learning about the Holy Spirit and what it means to hear the Holy Spirit, but I still didn't know it was the Holy Spirit. Then I got invited onto an Alpha weekend. And I thought, these people are crazy. 
talking about the Holy Spirit, who's the Holy Spirit? But on that weekend, I realized that what I'm hearing the whole time is the Holy Spirit. And I connected the dots of this voice that's been speaking to me is the Holy Spirit that's been speaking to me. Now I've got the theology to understand my experience. I think it's Bill Johnson that says, a theology without experience is also just religion. So when, I read, when you read the Word about the Holy Spirit, about what's in the, available in the Word, it is actually God inviting you personally, by name, into an encounter with the living God. It's not just suggestions and things that's nice. He's inviting you. When you read the Word of God, it is God speaking to you. When you're reading the Word of God, it's as if God is standing in front of you and speaking directly to you. If you need a Word of God, read your Bible. <laughs> Amen. And we love words and we love prophecy. But if you want to hear straight from God, read your Bible. It doesn't have to be complicated. But while you're reading your Bible and the Holy Spirit starts to speak to you, and I'll pour out my spirit in all flesh. My goodness, something can happen to you. I know, because it happened to me last week. I'm still recovering. <laughs> but it's both. It's the Word and experience. It's knowing the Word and encountering the Holy Spirit. It's not one or the other. I love what Smith Wigglesworth said. He said the last great revival will be a relationship between the Word of God and the power of the Holy Spirit. It will be both. Amen? Amen? So we all for encounters and growing in the revelation of, of what it means to walk with the Spirit. But we must know the Word. We need to know the Word. It's both. We must grow in the knowledge of God. So I did this Alpha weekend. And um, again, people praying in tongues. I didn't know what praying in tongues was. Thank goodness I found out. Otherwise I would have come to this church and I thought, all you people are also mad. But I left the Alpha Weekend thinking these people are absolutely nuts. What are they up to? But you see, the Holy Spirit is so kind to us because He was still speaking to me in a way that I could understand. And that's what I love about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will speak to you in a way that you can understand. Amen? And that's where relationship with God is so important. Each one of us, we need to know how we are seen by God. We need to understand how God sees us. And we need to grow in that relationship of hearing the Holy Spirit because He will speak to you in a very unique way sometimes. Sometimes if you're someone that appreciates music or whatever it is, God can speak very profoundly to you. I remember one day I was listening to an Adele song. And I suddenly started weeping. I thought, no, I mean, she's not that good that I'm going to start crying when I listen to her. <laughs> I don't listen to a lot of music, but I, I'm listening. I'm thinking, I don't know why I'm crying. And then I started to listen to the words of what she was singing. And the Holy Spirit says, I want her. She's so broken. I love Adele. I want her. I want her to know me. And as I started to hear that, I started weeping and weeping. I thought I was to say, pray for her. Pray for her. But God will speak through things like that. He will speak through things like that. And, and you see, if we, if we grow up like I did, we are, I try to put God in boxes of what He can and can't do, we will sometimes miss God in the simplicity of everyday normal life. That's why I say everything is supernatural. We just need to, we need to keep hearing the Holy Spirit that He speaks to us in the midst of everyday normal life. So wherever we're going, normal natural things become supernatural. Amen? Came back from the Alpha weekend. I heard these people making all these funny noises. I thought, I don't know what these people are up to. But anyway, God, I'm ready. I'm open. Because I've gone this far. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm having to unlearn all the things that I learned from growing up in the church where I was. But I just, I'm open. I want to just suggest to you a very good place to be to grow in a relationship with God is just keep an open heart. Keep your heart open and be ready to keep learning. Every time I get to a point in my life, I go, you know what, God, I, I really know your love. Oh my goodness, I'm setting myself up for something to happen. 
Because normally God will say to me, do you, do you really think that you know my love? And then something happens where I go, no, I, I actually have no clue because then he shows me more of his love and I'm like, I'm just starting from the beginning. We, we must never become experts too much that we don't learn. We must always be open to learn. Amen? We had a youth group that we were running and again, I didn't know any of these things. I was just having fun with Jesus. That, that's actually the best place to hear from the Holy Spirit, just having fun with Jesus. And I remember picking these youth up. I'm still having problems with praying in tongues and all those kind of things. We're just driving to a youth event. We get to the event, open the door, I climb out. I say, come guys, we're going. They can't get out the car. I say, guys, come out. They were physically stuck in the car. They couldn't get out the chairs. I was saying, what is wrong with these people? What is going on with these people? They couldn't get out the car. They said, we're stuck. I said, what do you mean you're stuck? They said, we can't get out. Now I'm going, what is wrong with these Christians? More and more like that kind of stuff started to happen, and I couldn't explain it. I'm just like, Lord, I don't know why these things are happening, but I'm open. I'm open. Then a friend of mine came to one day and said, I want to pray for you to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit and to pray in tongues. I'm like, there's no chance you're praying for me for that. I do not want to sound like those other Christians. <laughs> Can you see how long the Lord has had to work with me? <laughs> I was very stubborn. <laughs> but my heart was open. If your heart is open, it's very easy for him to work with you. Even though you've got all your own ideas, if your heart is open, he can work with you. This precious girl came and prayed for me, and immediately I started praying in tongues. And I thought, this is the most stupid thing I've ever done in my life. What is this rubbish that I'm speaking of? For about eight months, every time I prayed in tongues, I'm like, what a silly thing I'm doing. <laughs> now, it's my first language. Then English, then Afrikaans, then Zulu. I've got four languages I speak. I want more than that. But right now, number one is tongues. I love praying in tongues. What I'd love to do one day is like be able to say, like Paul, I pray in tongues more than all of you. Wow. I would love to be able to say that one day. Yeah. Because as we're praying in the Spirit, we are being built up in Him. Amplifies says like an edifice, stronger and stronger in God. Amen? started to pray in tongues, and I'm just telling you with anything new that's in your life, sometimes you shift into something new, it feels strange, you, you, you don't understand it, but the Holy Spirit starts to speak to you, I just want to say to you, just go with it. As the Lord is leading you, just go with it. You, you might not be able to explain it or even understand it in many ways, but as He starts to work with you, I've always found sometimes I get the theology first, sometimes I get the experience, and then I get the theology later. I just go, Lord, you do it in whatever way you want to. I'm open. Amen? I didn't know that the Bible said I'm justified by faith and I have peace. But when I had that encounter with Jesus, I had peace. Then I saw the scripture. No wonder I have peace. Because if you could speak to me like that, with, with no condemnation, of course I have peace with God. Amen? This is a journey that I'm still on and I'm still growing in. But I want to keep learning. And when I read the thing, like the book of Acts, and I read the book of Acts and I think that that is a baby church. That is a new church. New church with new Christians in, and that's the book of Acts. We are this side, how many thousands of years? We didn't have to go wait like they did at Pentecost because the Spirit was poured out. We don't have to tarry for days and days anymore because He's available right now. 
We should have such an expectation and desire in our heart. When you look at the book of Acts, it should provoke us to go, if that was possible, then what is possible now? Jesus said, anyone that believes in me, the same works that I do, you will do, and greater. Again, I say these things to challenge you and me. The starting point of Christianity is the same works that Jesus did. Now, I wasn't taught it like that. But when I saw that, I'm like, my goodness, I need to keep growing in the grace of God. There is a lot of growth that needs to take place in me because if that's the entrance point, I'm here. But if he says he's going to give me more, I'm going for all of it. I want to see all of it. You see, we have an inheritance. We'll we'll also speak about this. As, as, As part of our gift, the Holy Spirit is part of that inheritance, the deposit that's given to us. He is there to help us to make use of our inheritance. Amen? And our inheritance is from above, it's imperishable, and is not taken away. It's kept by God for you. The Holy Spirit is there to show you what your inheritance is and what's available to you from the Father. Now here's the the good news of the gospel. In the natural, we wait for our parents to die before we get our inheritance. Isn't that correct? You don't get an inheritance until your parents pass away. You see, the one who gives us this inheritance, the guarantee of this inheritance has already died. Your inheritance is guaranteed by his death, and he's already died. Your inheritance belongs to you. It's already yours in Christ, and the Holy Spirit in fellowship will guide you into everything that the Father has for you. That's why the promises of God are not maybe and and if. They can't be because the inheritance has already been given. The promises are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. Now as a parent, I really want to create a strong desire inside of you tonight to go, I want to experience everything that God has for me. It's not selfish, it's humble. Because if God has made everything available at such a great price, the greatest joy that He will get is seeing you experience everything that He has for you. And it's not just for you, it's for those around you. I like, I like pictures. Imagine you get invited, I've used this, I think, before here before, to a buffet. It has got piles of delicious food. And you are very hungry. Morse very hungry. <laughs> and you are very, very hungry, and you go forward, and you get a lettuce leaf. And you go back to your table, you say, I'm very happy with my lettuce leaf. The noises that your tummy are making will tell everybody around you that you are lying. Because as my daughter says, my one daughter says, I'm so hungry, my tummy is roaring like a lion. When that happens, I feed them immediately. (laughs) An angry woman is one thing, a hangry woman is another thing altogether. (laughs) It's like life and death situation, I have four of them. I need the resurrection power of Jesus to keep me. The Father has an inheritance for you. Humility is to spend it. Use it. He wants us to experience. You see, when Jesus went to the cross, He purchased everything that we need for life and godliness through the finished work of the cross. Humility is to freely take it. Receive it. And experience it. The Word of God says, we have not received the Spirit of this world, but the Spirit of God who reminds us of the things freely given. Now imagine you went to that buffet and you paid 400 rand. And you went and ate your lettuce leaf. It's a very expensive lettuce leaf. And you just took a lettuce leaf. 
when it's been purchased for you and you can eat as much as you want. Me, I say to you, eat all you can. And when someone else comes and says, I paid it for you as well, it's not going to cost you anything. I've paid the bill. See, this is like the gospel. Freely purchased for you. Redeemed at a great price, but for you for free. Made right with God at a high price. Not with silver and gold, but with His precious blood. Made right with God. You have a friend who then comes and says, I know you're loving this buffet. I'm paying for all your friends to come and enjoy this with you. That's what evangelism is. My goodness, I ate this delicious meal that somebody else paid for. It was delicious. It's so delicious, I want you to come and eat as much as you want. I have these things, the Lord says, food and wine and meat. Eat as much as you want. All these things come and freely receive to all who is hungry and all that is thirsty. You see, we have t types and shadows under the old covenant of the Holy Spirit. We'll get into some of that uh, tomorrow as well. But he is the type and shadow, the bread, the manna, the quail, all those things. But there is a superior reality in Christ where we've got to get to a place where we see that he is the bread of life, that he who comes to him will never hunger again. What we, what we hunger for now in the natural is to see the fulfillment of what he's done in and through us, being experienced by us and those around us. If you come to me and drink, you will receive living water. Not the water that runs out. It is like a borehole that goes down 300 meters, and when the water starts to come out, it gushes out. That's why the Word of God says, in your innermost being will flow rivers of living water. Amen? Amen. We have a journey and a relationship with God through the Holy Spirit. And I really feel just to encourage you tonight. We are on this journey. God wants us to enjoy this journey of growing up into maturity in Christ through fellowship with the Holy Spirit. But this is an ongoing process where we get to know Him better and better and better. We never arrive. Our position is in Christ. We see it in heavenly places. But the outworking of that relationship is day by day by day by year by year as we look more and more like Him. For this purpose are we saved. That we would take on the very image and likeness of Christ and look like Him in every way, in everything that we do. And religion cannot do that. It takes the power of the Holy Spirit. You have to be born again. You have to be filled with the Spirit. And then the Holy Spirit will make you just like Him. Amen. And I want to be just like Him. Him. Amen? I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. And then it speaks about visions and dreams. You see, when, when the spirit's poured out, all the gifts of the spirit will start to flow. All the gifts will start to function through people. And we're going to get onto some of that as well. So I'm just Give me a little bit of a kind of a highlights tonight, and then we're going to unpack some of this more in depth. If we're going to get into how does the Holy Spirit speak, why the gifts are important, how the gifts function in and through us, because that's also how we hear the Holy Spirit and how other people can hear the Holy Spirit. Amen? You see, the gifts, tongues, is for you. Just say amen. Tongues is for you. Tongues helps you. So if you want to be selfish with one thing, be selfish with tongues and use it often. Because it will always benefit you. And when it's finished benefiting you, it will help others. The more you pray in tongues, the more you stir the, the grace of God around tongues, the more you will start to flow in the other gifts of the Spirit. 
As you're praying in tongues and you get built up in tongues, the prophetic words of knowledge, all those things will start to flow out of that. That's, that's where relationship starts. Amen? Amen. I'm just going to go with one or two little words that I felt uh, just in praying for here. And I just, I just want to maybe... I feel just to step out a little bit just in terms of that word, pour out my spirit on all flesh. If that is spoken to your minister to you, I want you to do something in faith tonight to stand up and allow the Holy Spirit to start to minister to you. And I'm trusting for people here tonight to have an encounter with Jesus and you're not going to be the same again. Ever again. You're going to be different. Amen? And, and we love praying. I love praying for people. Um, I've got a friend of mine, Jean Guthrie. She, she is like a modern day version of, of Catherine Kuhlman. I've been around her for years. She never prayed for healing. She just used to pray for people. People go down in the power of God and she just used to leave them. And, and the Holy Spirit did whatever he wanted to do. And I very much appreciated her ministry because she just she was like, I just leave them up to God. Then she got a revelation of God's will to heal, and I've heard her preach and teach on God's will to heal, and she's seeing incredible healing taking place. Even though people got healed in that encounter, as she's grown and bold and strong preaching on healing, she's now seeing more of that happen in her ministry as well. But here's my thing. Just be open for the Holy Spirit to speak to you. Amen. Amen. So I just wanted, the, the one word I got uh, tonight was, number one, God is going to pour out His Spirit on all flesh. Amen. All flesh. Amen? Then I just had a word I felt for, uh, and I'm not scared to make mistakes, by the way. Okay, so I'll step out in these areas as I was sharing with the guys in the car. I, I prayed for two guys in the other gym the other, the other day with, with shoulder issues. I got a word of knowledge for both of them for shoulder issues. Went over and prayed for them. And God instantly healed them in the gym. And um, I saw the father the other day. And I was very sure that I heard a back issue. So I went over to him. He said, I'd love to pray for your back. And he said, I've got no back problems. So I thought, okay, well, it's got to be somebody else here. But while I'm here, do you need prayer for anything? You see, you'll never make a mistake in showing good to people. The Holy Spirit will always, he can always use it. So he said, yes, but I actually do need prayer for something. His son has gone to the trials for the Springbok Sevens, but he played one game for Ireland. And they will not accept him into the Springbok team because he has got one cap for Ireland. And his father said, we need a miracle. We need Ireland to cancel his one game that he had. And we don't think they're going to do it. But because you've asked me to pray, I want to pray for you. We prayed that day that Ireland would change their decision and cancel his one Irish cap so that he could play for the Springboks because he's young, he's only 24. The next morning they called, they said, we never do this, but we're canceling your cap, you're free to play for South Africa. Now that's a miracle. It started with a mistake because I actually got the wrong person for the word. But while I was there, I'm like, you know what, I've made a mistake, or oh, there's somebody here, I know someone's got a back issue, I know. But while I'm here with you, let's, what do you need to pray for? And in that moment, the Holy Spirit came and did something incredible. Amen? Amen? You just have to start with small steps. I shared this with you last time. When I started praying for the sick, I felt the fire of God come on me. Something supernatural happened to me. I'm like, I'm going to raise the dead, cast out demons, I'm healing the sick. I walk into the gym, I see the first sick person, I go, God, I'm not praying for them. I'm scared. <laughs> when I say to you, I was baptized in fire, I promise you for, for 30 minutes in my house, it felt like somebody threw me into a pot of oil and I burned for 30 minutes. I'm like, God, if you make me feel like this every day, I will pray for every person. The next time I'm in the gym, I feel nothing. Pray for this one. I'm like, I'm not praying. But if you will put them in the corner over there, I will pray for them. 
He meets you where your faith is at. He put him right there. I turn around, like, oh no. <laughs> if you put him in the kiosk downstairs, I will pray for him. And then he went to the kiosk. I'm like, oh. <laughs> you see, when you see this side of it, you think, where, how did this start? Yeah, I was scared. <laughs> I was petrified to pray for people. But when I started like that, I'm like, now I'm not going back. Now I'm like, I will just lay hands on anyone, anywhere, anytime. Amen? Because I've grown in the grace of God and I've stewarded that grace to keep praying and keep doing it over and over again because the Word of God says in 2 Peter, as we receive the promises of God, we put on the divine nature of God. Wow, wow, wow. You see, it's not me. That promise, that reality has become part of my DNA and God. It's now Christ living through me in that area. As we receive those promises, we put on the very divine nature of God. What happens is this. We had, a, we had an amazing time at the hospital the other day. We had a group of youngsters and um, we're praying for somebody. Before we go into the hospitals, we always pray for people before. We go, let's pray for people before, then we go into the hospital. So we always demonstrate so other people can pray. And I was showing somebody, this is an easy way to pray. If they've got pain, just tell the pain to go away in Jesus' name. So we've got somebody to come forward. Um, I said, you're going to do this. You put your hand like this, and you just say, go in Jesus' name. And this person just went, oh my goodness. So I'm like, what's wrong? The pain's gone. I said, well, it's not meant to happen when I prayed. It's meant to happen when he prayed. But because of authority, you listened. And the pain is gone. Yeah. You see, I believe that as you start to flow more and more and more, it just starts to come out of you like a river. As you're just walking along, skipping along, shopping at checkers, wherever you're going, that river is going with you. You're under the shadow of the Most High. And as you're going, that presence is going with you, and it is touching people. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Now you see, here's the thing. When you enjoy Jesus very much, you will see amazing things happen. We came out of the hospital one night. We had seen such amazing things. The word, I think it's an Acts, says, and many were healed and delivered and set free, and there was great joy in the city. You want to make a city happy? Heal the people, deliver them, set them free. The city will be happy. Full of joy. We came out of that hospital. I was experiencing such joy. I had to sit down outside the hospital. I was just having a good laugh. A good laugh. Not trying to do anything. And this guy started walking down the street towards me, and the next thing I heard, ah! I'm like, what is going on? He said, I don't know, but when I walked down the street and I started walking towards you, this joy came on me, and this thing left me. The depression is gone. I didn't pray for him. I didn't say anything. It's just enjoying Jesus. Now for me, that's how simple the walk with God has become. I enjoy Him, receive from Him, and as we walk in fellowship in the simplicity of life, that fruit just starts to flow out of us effortlessly. You see, if it's His fruit, then it's not our effort. Our effort is to rest in Him. Wow. Hebrews 4 says, Labor to enter the rest of God because when you rest in God, it is now God who's doing the work because the work was finished from the foundation of the world. Wow. Hebrews 4, enter into that rest. You walk in rest, you walk in power. Wow. The more you at rest, the more you see the power of God. Amen? Amen. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop there. I want to just give an opportunity. Just, I, had, I had a word for, I, I just distinctly felt that there's somebody had a, like a kidney problem. 
but there's somebody that had a kidney problem, I'd like to pray for them. Does anyone here has got a, a kidney issue? Kidney issues. I want to pray for you. Distinctly felt for that. Now, a word of knowledge is just to speak directly to people, to encourage people to receive from God. But God's word to all of you is he wants to heal you. But a word of knowledge is specifically to people to build their faith and encourage them to receive from God. Okay? But if you want a good word, Isaiah 53 is a good word. Amen. For all of us. We're going to pray for those people. And then I'm just going to go out with this. I, I just... I very clearly heard this, and I'm, I'm just going to put it out there. 2nd of July, 1972. Is that anybody here? 2nd of July, 1972. I'll call it again tomorrow if I need to, but I very specifically felt that day is either a birthday for somebody or it's a day that is significant for somebody here. If it's you, I've written it down here. I'll put it out again tomorrow, but I specifically felt that when I was praying yesterday. So can we just go with, can we start with the kidneys? Can I just ask you guys to stand? I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray from here for now. And then we're going to pray for everybody. And if there's anybody that wants ministry afterwards, I'm happy to pray. But Benny, are there any of you guys who want to pray tonight? We'll see. Okay. Can you two just stand up quickly? Can we, you see, we are the body of Christ. Amen. Amen. So I want you to connect your faith. We're going to pray for both of them. I'm not going to ask exactly what's wrong because I don't need to know. We just need to know him. Okay, so I'm going to ask you just to put your hands on. We can just put hands on. I want you just to close your eyes. It's Jesus who heals you. We just release the healing of Jesus in these bodies right now, Father. We just release your anointing, Father, into these physical bodies, and we thank you for the kidneys to be completely healed. Now, in Jesus' name. Now, in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, that you unblock those kidneys. You let them loose now, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for your healing anointing to flow into these bodies right now, Father. And we thank you for the kidneys to be completely restored. We thank you for a miracle in each one of these bodies today, Father, to glorify the name of Jesus. And we thank you for that right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, while we're praying, you may have felt something. Uh, I do both. Faith, and you can feel the anointing. Go with both. If it's in faith, stand in faith. If you feel something, go with what the Holy Spirit is also doing. Sometimes you'll feel the anointing in the presence. You'll feel the flow, the virtue of God flowing in. I don't know if you guys felt anything. Did you feel anything? What did you feel? Whereabouts? Of your kidneys. We believe in faith. We thank you for the anointing. They both work. We don't have to choose. We can have both. Amen. Thank you for those kidneys to be healed. While we're praying... When you put your hands up, who felt the presence of God flowing through them? Put your hands up. Who felt the presence of God flowing through them? Can I ask what you felt? Did you need any healing? What did you need healing for? Okay. Can you stand up and check it out, please? Uh, the, the gentleman next door, what did you feel? Did you need any healing? Okay. Can I, can I quickly ask you to come forward? Can you please check yourself out and just see what's happening there? And just let us know how you're doing? You just felt the presence of God. Okay. Is there anybody that has any pain in their body? Any other pain? Back pain, neck pain, shoulder pain? Sorry, what's your name? Henry. Henry. Who, who, who has any physical ailments, pain in their body, discomfort in their body? Can you just come forward? Or, or who else? Okay, let's just go with this quickly. Who else has physical pain in their body? Okay, I'm going to ask you just to stand right there if that's all right. We're just going to demonstrate as well. Okay, this is a good way to show people. I'm going to ask you just to stand right over there. I'm going to ask you just to put your hand over here. 
Number one, good way to pray for people, just ask, can I put my hand over you, happy for me to pray? And I want you just, have you ever prayed for anybody before? Okay, are you praying for people that are sick? Okay, we're going to just do it simple. What's wrong with you, man? Okay, pain. All the time. Okay. Let's just put our hands here. The Bible says, believers will lay hands on the sick and they'll be healed. So we don't even have to pray sometimes. We can just put our hands. Okay, so you're going to do that. Can you feel anything happening there? Yes. What's happened? It feels like it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's not sore. <laughs> 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 Praise God. See, that's how easy it's been to be. Okay, when you've got a smile on your face, it happens much easier. <laughs> We're not, now you're going to stay here now. Stephen, come here. What's wrong with you? Okay, can I ask you to just put your hands like that on your tummy? Just like that. Can I ask you guys just to put your hands on there? Okay. Here's the living waters inside of us. We're just releasing the living water. So just release healing. That's all you go. Just connect with the Holy Spirit. So I just release the healing. I just release the healing. Can you feel anything happening there? Yeah. What's happening? Um, it, I don't know. It feels like something is going down here at my back. Where was know. the pain? Yeah, in my front. Okay. Um. Just close your eyes. Bible says, freely you gave, so freely receive. All the pain goes. All the sickness goes. In Jesus' name. Okay, I want you just to check that out. Yes. Amen. Praise God. Okay. What's your name? Cheryl. Cheryl, what's wrong with you? I have pain in my back. Okay. Can we quickly put our hands on you? Okay. Again, make it very simple. Okay. Just put your hands and just relax. Okay, can you feel anything happening there? Is there pain at the moment? Okay, what's happening? <laughs> just, just relax. Okay, Stephen, put your hands <laughs> All of it goes. Thank you, Jesus. All of it goes right now in Jesus' name. Be free. Out. All the pain leaves now. All the pain goes. Out, out, out. All the pain leaves in Jesus' name. Okay, I want you to check it out again, Cheryl. It's getting better uh, compared to where it was before. How much better is it feeling at the moment? 10%, 20%, 50% better. Can we just give Jesus a big hand? Okay. Will you come and give us some more feedback later? I'd like to see 100%. Okay. 30, 60, we can see in stages, but I only see 100%. Amen. Who's next? Okay. Right now at the moment. 
Okay. I want you guys to just put your hands over here. Yeah, just relax. What I normally do, when someone comes to me and they say they've got pink eye or eye infection, I put my hand right in their eyes. Because I say, you mustn't do that. I say, I'm not scared of that thing. But I do it on purpose. When someone says, I've got flu, I say, come, I want to give you a big hug. I do. I do it on purpose. Because I studied lots of physiology and anatomy at university, and it told me how I must think. And I was always in fear of those things. Then I'm like, no ways. I'm going to do the opposite. Jesus loves you. Be healed in Jesus' name. All the infection goes now. Eyes be healed in Jesus' name. We command all the infection to go now. Out of the eyes in the mighty name of Jesus. Complete healing. See, I'm going to do it right now. <laughs> go in Jesus' name. Right now, you clear up now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Complete healing in these eyes. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, I want you to check it out and let me know how that's doing, please. What, what were the symptoms that you were getting? No, it's a very irritation on the red eyes for two months. Okay. Please, even tonight, let us know how it's feeling. Thank you. Okay. Who's next? What are you needing prayer Thanks, for? Glenn. Glenn? Okay. And are you in a lot of pain at the moment? Okay. Okay, so what you're going to do, this is how it works. So here's the thing. We, we never must get stuck in a method. Okay. So you are going to walk to that side and back. And then you're going to speak to us again. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, I want you to check it out and tell me what's going on there. Okay, has most of it gone? Yes, definitely. About how much? 50% is gone. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, just put your hand there. Relax and just say, in Jesus' name, be healed. Completely free in Jesus' name. All the lost pain to go, Father. Right now in Jesus' name. Okay, I want you just to check that out. Um, if you want to get, get a good guideline for prayer, go and look how short Jesus' prayer was. When I saw that one day, I said, Lord, I'm very sorry. I've been praying for way too long. And my prayers are very, very, very repetitive. Um, give me the faith to pray simply like Jesus. Be healed, eyes open, deaf ears open, whatever it is, just be simple. You know it was very challenging. I, 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 it took a lot of time for me to just come down to a simple prayer like that because it, it was like I need, I need to pray long prayers to get results. And God's like, no, you need short prayers because then people know it's by grace. Amen? Can you just check it out again? Okay, completely gone. Praise God. Thank you. Anybody else? How was that? Awesome, man. Eh? How was it? Good. Okay. What is your name? Linda. Linda. From eczema. Okay. I want you guys, you're going to just hold your hands quickly. Okay. Close your eyes. We look to Jesus. The word says, believers lay hands on the sick and they will recover. And we thank you, Holy Spirit, that you touch this physical body now. And we thank you for the needs to be healed, Father, in Jesus' name. Right now, in Jesus' name, be healed. We just release your healing and your power in the knee, Father. Make it whole, make it completely restored. All the skin to be restored, Father. All the skin to be restored, in Jesus' name. Okay, I want you just to check that out, please. 
to see what's happening there. Much better? 100%, 80%? Okay, will you, will you, will you test it out and get back? Is the pain gone? Okay, will you check that out for us as well, please? Amen. Awesome. Anybody else? Praise God. We, we had a, a um, we just called it a prayer line at church the other day. We just stood like this. We just had people walking through and people just put their hands out. There was a lady that walked past. As she walked past, we saw a lot of people getting healed. But this lady had severe, severe uh, back issues for a long, long time. As she walked past, I got a word of knowledge and I said, God is putting titanium in your back. I don't know why I said that, but that's what I said. She was instantly healed. She's had no more back issues again from that day. Does she have titanium in her back? Who knows? I don't know. But all I know is her back was healed. Amen? So look to Jesus. The, the, it's more about where the heart is in terms of studying what God wants. We need to know His will and demonstrate. You can, uh, I'll, I'll be careful how I say this, but you, you can almost say whatever you want. Sometimes you even make mistakes. But you can still get a result because of the grace of God. Now we want to grow and look more like Jesus. But I've shared this with you before. I've prayed for people. I, obviously, I needed prayer for my hearing because I thought they had said like headache or something, but it was actually deafness or whatever it was. And I prayed completely the wrong prayer, but they still got healed. Okay. Never get caught up in the method. It's in relationship. Okay. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do... I would like anybody else that needs healing. Um, maybe, Benny, I'm going to put you to some work tonight. We're just going to stand. Are you, can we, are you happy to do it? We're just going to stand. I maybe just want maybe two or three other people this side. I want people just, if you need any healing, just you're going to walk through. We, are not, we might lay hands on you. We might not. I want you just to walk through, and we are trusting the Holy Spirit to touch people physically, and not just physically, emotionally as well. If you have emotional issues, problems going on, look to Jesus, and as you walk through, you're trusting God to touch you. Amen? Okay. So if you need, please just come forward if you don't mind. Um, who else wants to come pray? Benny, are there any other guys you want to come and pray? Yeah, come join us. Okay. If there's anybody else that needs specific healing, physically, emotion, whatever it is, I want you just to walk through. Okay? You guys, you're just going to put your hands out. That's it. If you feel to touch them, you can touch them. If you don't, just put your hands up. We are just doing it in faith that God is going to touch somebody. Okay, just walk through. Right now, in Jesus' name. Sorry, sir, come here, please, if you don't mind. From France. There's, what, what is the specific thing that you're needing healing for? Okay, receive it in Jesus' name right now. Go. I thought the Lord said there's a specific thing that you're needing, and go in Jesus' name right now. Be healed. Just, just watch in there, please. Hold in Jesus' name. All the headaches stop today. In Jesus' name. Out. All of the sickness goes today in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. You'll have no more of those. No more of those. Be healed. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. What's happening? You feeling? Funny. Funny in what way? Feels like when you get goosebumps, but it's going. It's going through you. Yeah. That's called the anointing, the presence of the Holy Spirit, and He's setting you free from that today. Fulham. Thank you, Father. It's gone. <laughs> The, I've got the headache the whole week and it's gone now. Better than grandpa. Eh? <laughs> Better than grandpa. Amen. What's wrong with you, man? Okay. We're going to just hold you there. Okay. Saints, I want you to just put your hands and we say, be healed in Jesus' name. Right now, be healed. Free. 
free. Miracle in Jesus' name right now. Be loosed from your infirmity and your sickness today. And we command all the symptoms to leave today in Jesus' name. Father, your anointing breaks every yoke of sickness right now. Every work of the enemy is destroyed through the name of Jesus. Now we say, heart, you be healed and you be restored right now in Jesus' name. Right now, right now. Your body broken for our healing and we thank you for complete restoration of your precious daughter right now, Father, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Fill her with your presence. Fill her with your power. Fill her with your anointing, Father. Fill her with your glory, Father. Thank you for new organs in this body today, Father. New organs. New organs. New vessels in this body today, Father. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Amen. Amen. You're going to give us a testimony. You're going to give us a testimony of what's happened. Okay. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Anybody else? Headaches. Anyone else with headaches? We've had one already go. Anyone else that gets headaches or migraines? Anybody else? Do you want to be free? Okay, just stand up. Just where you are. Can you guys quickly go there and just lay hands? Gavin, we lovely. Just, you can stand where you are. If you've got head, headaches or migraines, I want you just to stand. Are oh, you wanting to pray? Awesome, go for it. Thank you, Jesus. Science, the best thing to do is when you're getting prayer, close your eyes, look to Jesus. And we just thank you for healing virtue, Father, to flow through this place right now. And Father, I thank you that you will finish the work right now in every single person, that all the symptoms, all the headaches, all the migraines go today, Father, in Jesus' name. Complete healing in the bodies, Father. Complete healing in the bodies, Father. All the pain, all the infirmity goes, Father. In Jesus' name. Again, if you feel that anointing, you feel the presence of God working in you, just say, thank you, God, that you are healing me. Thank you that you're restoring me. Because the presence is often there to help you, and you can actually feel the virtue of God flowing through you. It can be heat. It can be electricity. Sometimes you feel like a wind's going through you. That's the presence of God ministering to you. Amen? What's happening there, ma'am? You felt the heat on your head. How did that feel? You also felt it. <laughs> What's that feeling like? It feels good. Did you have pain before? And do you have any pain now? Yay! Come on, saints. Come on. You know what I love about this? There's a word in Zulu, mahala, free. I love seeing people get things freely. Isn't that good news? Who else had the headaches? There was one. Who else? It's worse. Okay, it's going to go right now. Close your eyes. Look here. Not, you can close your eyes. When it gets worse like it, you must get excited because it means it's going to go now. Don't get put off. <laughs> Amen. It's going to go now. Close your eyes in Jesus' name. Father, we command all infirmity and sickness to leave the body right now. We say go in Jesus' name right now. All the pain lifts off in Jesus' name right now. Thank you, Father. And just fill her with your presence. Fill her with your peace. Fill her with your power. 
fill her with your anointing, fill her with your joy, fill her to overflowing even now, Father, in Jesus' name. Just put your hand on your hands there if you don't mind on the on your tummy. The word of God says from your innermost being will flow rivers of living water. Unlock her, Father, from the inside out. Release the anointing. Release the presence of God through her, even now, Father. And we thank you for full restoration of her health, Father, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Okay, I want you just to check that out. What is happening there now? It's feeling Okay. Okay, so sometimes I'm, I don't want to freak people out. When I pray for people sometimes with arthritis and things like that, and they say it's getting worse, I get even more happier. Because that thing is now going to go. Okay? Often you pray for people with arthritis, um, they, they go to doctors and they, they can't find the cause of the sickness. Have you ever seen sicknesses that move around people's bodies? Can you explain that? How does pain move around? Can anybody tell me how pain can move around your body? That's why it must go. And that's often why when you pray for people, sometimes they want to, they feel faint, or they want to sometimes feel like they're in a throw up or nauseous. It's because that thing is coming out. Okay? You cannot be oppressed as a Christian or possessed, but you can certainly be oppressed sometimes in your flesh and in your emotions, the enemy will do whatever he can to try and resist you. Okay? That's all we're seeing there is often the, the symptoms will get worse because they're trying to intimidate you and put you off. Then I just go, no, 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 thank you, you are now going. I'm not tolerating it, it has to leave. In Jesus' name. How's that feeling? It's in your ear. <laughs> It's going to go out the ear now as well. Just stand there. It's going. Just relax. It goes in Jesus' name. Out. All of the pain goes. Also, often when you're praying like this, corporately like this, and people are praying, don't be surprised, because if your ears are listening, often we see people getting healed in the hospital. Some of the times, the funniest testimonies you have, you know that people are listening, because you pray like this, and then you hear someone say, my pain's gone. And you say, I'm not praying for you. But we listened. And I got healed. I've had that happen so many times. But why were you listening? It's a private conversation. <laughs> I say, we caught you. You shouldn't be listening, but God is good. He healed you. I promise you, we have seen radical. One evening, we turned the whole ward upside down. We prayed here and two people, Hindus, got healed behind us because they were also eavesdropping. <laughs> they instantly felt all the arthritis go out their bodies. And they said, how do you do that? I said, it's Jesus. You can receive him right now. We see people getting saved like that all the time. Give your life to Jesus. He's showing you how good he is now. Give your life to Jesus. What's happening? It's gone. Amen. Okay. Anybody else? Any kind of fevers, headaches? Is there anyone else that we haven't dealt with? Anyone else that has any kind of fevers, headaches that has not received prayer? Okay, are you still feeling pain here? Okay, just relax, close your eyes. In Jesus' name, we just release healing. All the symptoms go out of that body right now in Jesus' name. Now it's clear. All the sinus is clear in Jesus' name right now. Right now, be healed in Jesus' name. They're clearing now. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Anoint right now. Break the power of sickness in that body right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Anything happening there? can just feel something here. Pain. Okay, I want you just to relax. Close your eyes. Just go lay your hands on his head for me. Are there any more, any more backs that need, anyone else that needs back 
to back healing. So we, so we, this is obviously the, the ministry of the Holy Spirit, but this is also listening to God. Okay, so what we're trying to demonstrate here as well is we're just listening to the Holy Spirit. He's speaking, and we're just listening, and he's talking, he, he's talking right now. The, the easiest way to learn is God loves people, and he wants them to know that he loves them, and he will always try and speak to them. The Lord just said to me, you just need to listen to what I think about that person. Just if you start to see that person how I see them, you will hear exactly what I think about them. That's, that's how you prophesy and give words of knowledge. You're just speaking what God speaks over that person. Okay, who's got back? Anyone else that's got back issues? And again, um, who else has got back issues? Netya? Okay, no one else. Okay, come forward. I want, you, I want you just to, you guys can just stand that side there. If it's not better by the time you get there, they're going to pray for you. But you can just start over there. You're just going to walk to the other side. Why are you sitting now? Many lavius, I believe. Okay. Now I want you to start again. We're going to get you to the comrades. I'm going to make you work for this one. <laughs> just walk. And I don't know what's wrong with it, but by the time you get there, we trust it's completely healed. Okay, just check it out. It's gone. Amen. Amen. Okay, it's, it's not method. Sometimes the Holy Spirit will give you specifics of how to do things. Sometimes he just goes, you decide. So I, I just thought that's going to be, I don't know why we're going to walk. Sometimes you just say, oh, just, um, just climb in the chair and do a somersault. Let's just say for, the, for whatever reason. <laughs> I promise you, sometimes I'll hear the Holy Spirit say, just do it whatever way you want to. And, and then I think of ways, uh, draw something on the sand, walk over the sand. I've done all sorts of things, and it's, it's just partnering with Him. Amen? You just listen to Him, and then you do what He asks you to do. Okay, anyone else? Who else had back issues? Okay. Um, okay, we're going to just lay hands on you. Just if you can stand over there. Okay, just number one, can we, lay, can we lay hands on you? Yes, okay. I want you just to relax, look to Jesus, close your eyes and just receive from him. Okay. I'm just gonna ask you, can you guys feel anything happening at the moment? Okay. Stephen, can you feel anything? Also tingling. Can you feel anything in your body at the moment? Okay. Can you feel any pain in the body at the moment? Okay. Just check it out quickly for me, please. Just do something. Move. Okay. Do, so where do you normally feel it? Okay, do you want to sit and then stand up? Okay, do that quickly. Okay, praise God. The, the divine chiropractor. Amen. Um, isn't that awesome? Okay, so what I wanted to demonstrate with just having people come and pray is that anybody can do this. Okay, anybody can do it. It's available by grace through faith. Uh, we can operate in gifts. We can operate through the word. We can operate through anointing. Um, I always teach around this because most of the time that I pray, I pray out of faith. Okay? I've had radical encounters, and then the Lord would say, go pray for the person. I put my hand, and it feels like I feel like a dead fish. I feel nothing, and they go, I'm healed. And I think, jeez, I didn't feel anything. Then there are times where you can feel like what they felt now. You feel the presence of God go out of you, and the person will often feel the anointing of God. Electricity, heat, and things like that. It's just the presence of the Holy Spirit. Pray in faith because God's word reveals his will. Lay hands on the sick. So just lay hands on the sick. Okay, just lay hands on the sick. 
And then if the Holy Spirit starts to minister in a different way, go with what the Holy Spirit is doing. Otherwise, just stand in faith. Okay? That's as simple as I do it. Are you feeling anything? Okay, why were you not breathing clear before? Isn't God good? <laughs> That's just for free. Amen. You see, I, I wasn't actually praying for him. I just put my hand there. Okay, that's rivers of living water flowing out of us. Okay, that's rivers of living water. Okay. Anybody else? Um, I almost see like a... Is like a cervix issue. Someone's got like a, is a cervix issue. Cervix issue, cervix issue. What's cervix is? I don't even know what, the, I know kind of what it is. I should because I studied anatomy. <laughs> but if you've got, um, we won't make you stand. If you've got any issues with the cervix, um, uh, endometriosis, any of those kind of issues, irregular, whatever it is, okay, we're not going to ask you to stand. We don't embarrass anybody. It's not embarrassing. God loves you, but he wants you also healed. Amen? Amen? Okay, so don't have to put your hands up. Just say thank you, Jesus. No, don't even say thank you, Jesus, because we don't know who you are. <laughs> Be healed in Jesus' name right now. Amen? Amen. You're, you're healed. Amen? I remember one day we were in uh, Zululand. We had a lady there. It was just like the Bible. Twelve years she'd been bleeding. Non-stop. Couldn't stop it. Been to every specialist, every doctor. She came forward. She said, I need prayer. I said, what's... I didn't ask. In fact, I just said, we're going to pray for you. We prayed. The next day she came and said, you will not believe what happened. It's the first time in this morning I woke up, I'm not bleeding. For the first time in 12 years. I was like, that is like the Bible scripture. The woman with the woman bleeding issue was instantly healed. Okay, so we are trusting for people that needed prayer that God is going to completely heal any of those issues that's inside there. Amen? Amen. We also want to see the church grow. So I would love to pray for people that have not been able to fall pregnant or can't have children. I'd love to see the church grow here for you guys as well more. It's the easiest way you do it in-house. Amen? Evangelize and, and go forward and multiply. Amen? <laughs> okay. If that's you, you also don't have to put your hand up. But we just corporately right now, Father, we thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit to break any yoke over people tonight that cannot fall pregnant and want children. And Father, we thank you for your grace to meet them right where they're at, Father. And we thank you for miracles to happen in their bodies, Father. If the organs need to be changed, moved, it doesn't matter what needs to happen inside their Father. We thank you that you even take things out that shouldn't be there, Father. Endometriosis, it goes in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you that you take it out of those bodies in Jesus' name. Even now, thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. We prayed for a lady a while back, um, also bleeding issues, uh, severe. And um, there was something going on with her womb, and she was going for major surgery. They were going to have to uh, actually change it around and, and cut up pieces and put it all over the place. Major, very risky surgery. And I just put my hand on her stomach like this, and as I touched it like that, she said it felt like, a big python was crawling around inside of his stomach. And I'm like, oh my goodness, don't even tell me what you're feeling because I don't want to know. But as I was praying like this, I could actually feel something was going on inside of his stomach. From the next morning, all the bleeding stopped. When she went back to the gynae, the gynae did another checkup. He said, I cannot explain it, but all the organs have moved and the parts that were in the wrong place are back in the right place. Completely healed it. I only ask later because when people tell me in the beginning, 
it's like my anatomy and my physiology wants to kick in and tell me all the reasons why it can't happen. Amen? That's why a lot of time I don't ask. I just go, it doesn't matter. Not because I don't care for you, but I, I need to know Jesus more than what's wrong with you. Amen? Amen. Okay. Once got no claw mark. I want everyone just to stand, if we can just finish. We're not harping anything. We're not going to manufacture anything. But I want you to have a desire in your heart for the Holy Spirit to touch you and to meet you tonight. So when you leave it tonight, you're not the same. Okay? If you start to encounter the Holy Spirit, then give yourself to it and don't hold back. Give yourself to Him. Amen? Father, we just thank you for your word. Your word says that you'll pour out your spirit in all flesh, but I also believe that it was a word for this house for tonight. And I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you'll pour out now in all flesh. Thank you for dreams. Thank you for visions for this house, the young and the old. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you touch them and you bring about such a desire for the supernatural inside these hearts tonight, Father. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you'll pour out on all flesh here tonight, Father. All of them will be baptized in the Holy Spirit, Father. All of them will be baptized with power from on high. All of them will be baptized with fire, Father. All of them will receive what you have, because you only have good gifts, Father. You only have good gifts for your children, Father. Just put your hands up. Close your eyes. Look to Jesus. So, Jesus, I receive from you right now. I receive from you right now. Fire, touch them now, Holy Spirit. Touch each person where they're at. Touch them right where they're at, Father. And fill them, and fill them, and fill them, and fill them to overflow. Fill them to overflow. Fill them to overflow. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Right over this place. Fill them, Holy Ghost. Fill them in this place. Fill them in this place. Just start to pray in tongues. Fill them. Fill them in this place. Fill them in this place. Stir up the gifts, Holy Spirit. Stir up the call. Stir up. Stir up the gifts inside of them, Father. Stir up the call on their lives, Father. Fan into flames the call and the gifts on their lives, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Break off every limitation, Father. Let them see themselves how you see them, Father. Let the boldness rise up from in, Father, as they see you as their Abba. Boldness. There's one who comes with water. He will baptize you with water. But there's one whose sandals I'm not worthy to even touch. He will baptize you with fire. With fire. Thank you, Jesus. Fill them, fill them, fill them, Lord. We, we just want to walk more like you, Jesus. We want to speak more like you, Jesus. We want to think more like you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Full, 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 full. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. From our innermost being will flow rivers of living water. Father, thank you for those living water to flow out of us tonight, Father. Flow out of us. Flow out of this church. Flow out all over this nation, all over this place, Father. Rivers of living water, Father. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Who's feeling the fire on them? Who's feeling the fire on them? Just put your hands up. Who's feeling the presence of God on them? Just, can you guys just go, just going to put hands on people. Just, just receive, receive, 
receive, receive the fire, receive, just receive, thank you Jesus, receive, receive, just look to Jesus, let him touch you, just receive, let the fire of God touch your hearts tonight, receive, receive, thank you Father. Freely you gave, so freely we receive. Freely we receive. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Fill them. Fill them. Fill them. Fill them. Fill them. If you've been finding um, your Christianity stale, boring, difficult, make a decision in faith today. Say, Father, give me that joy that gives me strength. I need it today. And look to Him and in faith, make a decision to receive that joy and let the joy of the Lord fill you up and be your strength. We're not talking self-effort, willpower, we're not talking about that. That's human effort. We're talking about the power of God that becomes your strength. The joy of the Lord will be your strength. If you've been battling with anxiety, fear, depression, I'm not going to ask you to put your hands up. I'm just going to ask you to look to Jesus right now and just receive from Him. Father, I thank you that in your presence is fullness of joy. Close your eyes. I don't know your circumstance and situation. He does, and He wants you free. Just say amen. He wants you free. We are not of those of the world that, that mourn like the rest of the world. There's another way that God calls us to live. There's a joy. There's a peace. There's a righteousness. It's the kingdom of God. Look to Him and be filled with His joy. Be filled with His peace. Be filled with His righteousness. Let that righteousness dominate you. Let that joy dominate you. Let that peace dominate you. It will lift every burden. It will lift every anxiety off you. That's why Jesus says, do not worry about anything. Amen, I receive that. It's a wonderful place to live in where nothing can make you worry. I'm going to say a very bold statement here. Saints, in the grace of God, there's going to be a joy in this house. There's going to be a joy in this house you will face circumstances and situations that used to stress you and cause such anxiety. And I'm telling you, by the grace of God, saints, you are going to look at those things and you are going to laugh at them. Amen. Come on now, I'm serious. My goodness. <laughs> Sorry. Woo, Jesus. We're going to look at those things that dominated us for so long, made us lose sleepless nights because of fear and anxiety. I'm telling you, the Lord Jesus, He's going to set you so free from anxiety and fear because the joy of the Lord will be your strength. Let's rather get addicted to that. Full on addicted to the joy of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Who's, who's feeling anxiety and, and fear and stress leaving? Amen. God has done something for you. Thank you, Jesus. Anybody else, if you came in here with anxiety or fear and God is setting you free, just put your hands up. Praise God. It's all healing. It's all the Holy Spirit.
Thank you, Father. We are going to close up. Happy with that? The night is still very early. If I go past this, then I kick into second, third gear, then I can go for a very, very long time. So rather, we've got still tomorrow and the next day and the next day. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Bless you. It's been good to be back with you. I hope you have enjoyed tonight. And please, yeah, bring people that need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, people that need to be healed, whatever it is. Invite friends in. We want to see people getting touched by God and pray for them. Amen. Amen. Be part of this. Go home. Spend some time praying for people. If there's people that you want to see here, pray for them. And if you really want to see them here, invite them here. Amen. Bless you. Thank you. And if there's anyone that still needs prayer, we will happily pray afterwards. Amen. Thank you. Now, hallelujah. Of course, Kitty Edda, for sure, the lack of hand. Thank you so much.